to notice this different, well, different approach. <coughs> and in general, I like the line of the code. I like to I like to explore the codes, and of course I like a lot of important contemporary artists yes. that are important for me. Is it names on body or the world names? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, of course, I can mm -hmm. put some names. Um, for the iconography, I think uh, one of the most important artists is uh, Tamans. Uh, Tamans. For the iconography, yeah. it is very. But also for the colors, perhaps a bit. For the colors, I see. Yes. Yeah, so a bit, uh, not the, uh, the reds and the yellows, but the grey ones. And yes. The, mm -hmm. uh, there is, uh, of course, some, because you try to look some uh, thing about. Time months in my painting, but I think that it's not possible to look at the dialect entirely. No, of course. Right, yes. yeah. For the colors, for example, I like Peter Doyle with this big painting and a very, very strong color. And um, for the ability to switch from one technique to another, that is a kind of, of, of thing that I do when I paint. Uh, I like a young Polish painter, William Sasna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for the atmosphere, this is the last name. Swodowski. Yeah. Yeah. Norbert Swodowski is also one. But and these, these are all figurative paintings. <laughs> okay. yeah. They re refer to the reality, what we call reality. Yeah. And that's also when I look around. That's your uh, interesting point. I think not to paint abstract because the, the, mm -hmm. your compositions you paint uh, landscape or portraits or very classical genres. You know, mm -hmm. people. And uh, uh, well, when you start, uh, you, it refers uh, to, to situations in, uh, in in real life. I think. So when you talk about composition, mm -hmm. um, how do you begin? Yeah, I. I think it's. Uh, I don't like the. Um, I don't like to categorize the, in general the painting in abstract and figurative because there's a there's a border between these two way of making painting, and I like to work on this on this ball, on this boundary. Mm -hmm. And uh, about composition. In my painting, it's the composition in my painting is very very important because it comes before that meaning sometimes. Sometimes I can paint an image just for the composition because the composition strikes me. For instance, it's not important that you have a, a, you know an important subject to to make a painting, but you can. You can be interested in a, a, a balanced composition. For instance, we have pigeons in the show, and that, those are just three pigeons, so a very uncool un subject. But for me, they have a, a, a right composition, and it's enough for paint. Mm -hmm. Yes, you said uh, you were on the border of abstract and figurative, but is it the conscious act? Do you... Uh, yeah, yeah, because it's, it's an intuition. You, how do you make decisions? Well, uh, well let, let's talk about, uh, do you use uh, photographs or, or other uh, devices? Or stills? Or yes, I paint painting using, uh, by using uh, my own photos or I search in internet or most of my paintings come from still from video because in movies because uh, I do a lot of research in movies in order to find the right still the right image to to make a painting because but can you tell me what is the, what triggers you then in, yeah. in that image? yeah 
It's a feeling. It's a feeling, and uh, in general, images that strike me are um, are mute. This plot and matter of emotions or sensations. For example, I have some example, some examples here on yeah. sources. For example, this is a photo for yeah for for Kim. This portrait of uh, of the South Korean girl, and this is just a photo that okay. I took from a newspaper. Yeah, and. My aim is not to recreate the same uh, feeling of the photograph, but at the end of the process of, of the painting, the painting have to be, has to be more strong than, than the image. You, know, you have to find the inner logic of the painting. You can start from a photograph and you start this dialogue between you and the canvas and you, you, know, you have this image in your mind that you want to emerge. Yes, and you have your, your size and you have your material yes. and you make decisions. Yes, to but during the process there's a moment when uh, it's not you that deal with this dialogue but mm -hmm. it's the canvas and you are, have just to follow the, the painting. I think you have to explain it to the, to the audience because that's very interesting, I think. Yeah. And. Um, Yes, you mean about the, the process? The process of painting itself, I think. When, yeah. you, when you make the decisions, yeah. I, yeah. I recognize that as a painter, I, I yeah. don't know if everybody does it, has the same, the same experience. Yeah. yeah, the process of painting, in my opinion, in my opinion it's, it's related to, to making decisions because during this process you, you have to find this inner logic of the painting the, this grammar of the painting and uh, when it's finished, to understand when it's finished, when the painting is finished, I think it is one of the most difficult things to learn. It took years because it's very easy to, to undermine a painting because for the logic of the painting you always want to try to make a mark or another, another brush stroke but you have to catch which is the moment when, when it yes. works. And I think we can see it here, also with pigeons. Uh, you, you stop at the right moment. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, perhaps pigeons were dis uh, disappeared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very easy that image, image can disappear under your eyes. For instance, Kim, it's a work that it's finished in a few hours of work because the process of the painting is always different. There's not a rule. You can make a painting. You can decide when it's finished in just a few hours of work, or you can paint for all day long. And you know, at, at the end of, of, the, of this process, you can you can look at the painting and you say, "Oh my God, it's horrible." <laughs> I better go home. <laughs> so you, yeah. Yeah, it's different. Kim, for instance, is it's, <coughs> it's, it's finished in few hours, and when it happens, for me, it, the painting is like a performance, because because it, because if you because during the, the process you have this dialogue and this act, the act of painting, and when the act is very very fast. For me, it's a performance. For yourself? Yeah. It's, it's not for the, for the audience, not for no, the observer. No, it's my feeling. It's your own feeling. Yeah. The it's painting is the result of this and performance act in your studio. In your studio, when you are satisfied, I think. Because yeah. otherwise, you're, yeah, it's also. Otherwise, the process is longer. For, for instance, here we have other painting in which I had to work. A lot to find the right solutions. For example, in that portrait, that yellow portrait, it took about two months of work to to decide when that yellow was right. Because at the beginning, was for me, was too too 
too high the color and you know you have to find a right balance and uh, sometimes it can take two or three weeks or, or also a month do you never lo lose your patient <laughs> I always lose my patience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, to do it on your knee and break it. <laughs> yeah, you know, there are a lot of accidents during this during the process. process. Yeah. Yes, and it is, for example, it's possible that during this process some stains on, on the canvas for me could be more interesting than yeah, a, well, yes, yes, yes. Than a detailed brush stroke. Yeah. Because when I paint, I try to avoid the trap. The trap of the two finished. You yes. have, yeah. The, the one trap of the two mm -hmm. finished. Yes. That it's too finished. Too. When it's too finished. Oh, yeah. you, you want to say that, that it's not interesting. Mm. That's perhaps the, the Because, it, because it, it could be too painting. Yeah. You have to freeze a moment, a moment when it works. And you can sometimes. Um, you work too much and you undermine the, the, the painting. Spontaneity. You lose this yes. spontaneity, yeah. yes. I have another question about the, the, the size of the, of the canvases. Yeah. These are small, we can say. Yeah. Does it have something to do with the measures of the human body? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it looks very spontaneous, but when you make your brush stroke, you can handle it, but when it's yeah. too big, perhaps you're getting problems. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's it's not. There is not a rule because it's possible that you can struggle with a small painting, yeah. and you can make a a big painting in a in a very easy way. Then that's not a rule. For for instance, here is. Has been made in a in a, in a very oh, hours. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Is it important? Uh, do you know before you start uh, what size you you choose? You choose? Uh, the composition uh, influences the size because I have in my mind some images that, in my opinion, can fit with a particular size of canvas. Mm -hmm. And I, I decide the size of the painting. It depends on, on the images that you are. The subject also. On the subject, yes. That you we have a lot of canvases in your studio, which you can I, choose. Yes, because I, I, paint, I paint a lot. And I paint yeah. every day. And uh, after a few weeks, I have my studio full of paintings. And I mm -hmm. and I have to end up. After a month, I put away painting because for starting a new series of work, I need to have the studio empty mm. because because the colors, the the, the iconography, all this iconography that you build in your studio influence your mind to to build new canvas. So I need before starting a new production, I need a, an empty wall and an empty mind. Okay. We'll see here uh, a lot of uh, paintings. Are, it, <coughs> are these uh, produced in a period of a couple of months, or is it no? From this is this came from years? yeah. This came from I think two or three last years because we, me and Ron, and Rosa and Sarah, choose among among, among the, different among different periods. periods yes. yes. Yes, but it is possible that after a month of work, I have, for example, twenty paintings in my studio, and I have to choose. Yes, because it's you. You have to decide if first of all we have to decide if it's finished, and in the second hand, in second place, you have to decide if it's a good painting. Yes. Can you tell? Can you tell yourself? When it's ready, it's it's good, or is it a week after it, or a month? It depends. Some yeah, it's a good question because sometimes you can feel pretty soon that mm -hmm. it's a good a good painting. Other times you need to leave the painting in the studio and go the day after, mm -hmm. and, and you 
see it again and again. Again and again. And do you work on several campuses uh, yes, at the time? Yes, yes. I always, always work on several canvas. I have three good goals in my in my studio to paint. So you can turn around. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And um, sometimes I paint always, always um, in series. Yes. Mm, because it's a kind of process that uh, I continue to explore. Because painting means for me to, to explore the possibilities of the painting. I mean, what the, this painting can be among the endless, among endless possibilities. Yes, then, then you can make a series, so you do it in the first, you do it this way, and you can, another possibility, you use in the second one. Yeah. Like, like in the series? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is an example of, of painting, of what I mean, painting in, in mm -hmm. the series. And... Uh, Your inspiration was a video, right? Yes, this is a video that I took <coughs> driving my car during across um, a snowy landscape and um, I searched in this video uh, some frames to, to make paintings and in this case the, when you paint in series the process is very different, the process of the painting is very different compared with painting on a single canvas because first of all you have of course many canvas on the wall and you have to look at the canvases as if they were a single work so you start to paint you start with the first, first canvas and at the end of the series you can look from a certain distance at the canvases and you can find something wrong because you have to find the right balance among all the canvases and it's a little bit more it's different, it's a little bit tricky. Does the series tell you a story from one to all the other ones? Is yes. there a story between them? Yes. The the aim in this case is not to record the the story of the journey or the, the view of the landscape, but is the it's is to find the, the experience of the journey. You know when you are drive your car and look the street, then look the landscape, and you have different kind of vision during this journey. And this experience you want to translate in yeah in, in the same. And it's on purpose the little ones. You don't yeah. want to make them bigger. <coughs> Another time, perhaps. This same, you mean? Yeah. The same. Size. The size. Yeah. Yeah. The size it's possible. Of yeah. I think. I, I, yeah. I'm into, I, in my opinion, some of these, I some years ago I thought about painting one or two of these in a bigger in a bigger size because they are very very. They are almost abstract, and uh, on because of yeah. the of the boundary between mm. abstract and figurative. and figurative, and it would be interesting to try to translate because because if you take one or of these paintings, could it could be seen as an abstract painting, but I don't paint pure abstract because they always refers to something. For example, in this case, they refer to to landscape. Yes, that's true. Uh, you, I want to quote you. You, you said uh, uh, the sky and the, the landscape dissolves in, in paint or something like that. So uh, the, the little one, the landscape there, the yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's and it is only paint. So you, you said the, the figurativity is dissolving in paint. Yeah. There are patterns of paint only. Yeah. But I think it's both at the same time. Abstract and figurative. I was asking you about painting the landscape because uh, 
uh, you said uh, the sky and the, the land is dissolving in the, in the petals of pain. Mm -hmm. And that's true, I think, so but I think it's both at the same time. You're right, because, because I said that I don't like to, I don't like this, this uh, this section. This, yeah, this two categories. Yeah, this separation. And this that is a good example of both figurative and abstract in the same. In the and, same and it has place. also something to do with the observer, I think. Because when you you took you, you, you have a brush stroke, then everybody says it's the horizon or something like that. Yeah. I think that's psychological. Yeah. Yeah. Picking up on this idea of the observer. Mm -hmm. um, um, for me, the, there's a space, there's a moment for the interpretation of the, of the canvas, of the paintings. And for me, this could be the space of the, of, of the observer. I don't think I have to explain anything because it's important. Of course, in the painting, there is my own idea, my own narrative. But it's also important that the observer bring to the canvas his experience, his, his own narrative. And uh, for example, in one of my painting, the name is Crouching Road, not in this show, was, was this. This was a, a Jewish village destroyed by the Nazis during the Second World War. And uh, looking at this painting, a friend of mine, he is a historian, and he said that for him, in the canvas, it is possible to see two concepts of the time, because he, he explained to me that there is, the, there is a horizontal time, the time of the Jewish people, from the beginning, and there is a vertical time, the time of the, of the Nazis, because they wanted to, to realize the final selection in, in a short time. And, and this, this, my friend said that in this canvas it's possible to see in this cloud the vertical time of the, of the Nazis, and in this empty land, in this empty countryside, the, the horizontal time of the, of the Jewish. And this is interesting because I didn't know this concept of the two times. And this is a, an example, um, a good example, of the narrative of the observer. How is possible that the observer put your experience in this case? And it puts a meaning in it. The meaning, yes, yes. But that's also the thing, I, with the, every one has his own references, I think. And yes. Puts his, feeling or meaning yes. in, in that. So it's metaphorical, yeah. your friend said yeah. it's yes. metaphorical. Yes. Other, Another one sees something else, I think. Something bad. Other times the meaning, uh, yeah, for me the meaning, is, the meaning is open, and other times you can have um, an avoidance of the subject. For instance, in Grapes, that painting is a case in that case, the subject is not, re you cannot recognize the subject at the first glance. So you have to read the title to understand what, what is the iconography, what is the... Did you play with the painting? You do play with people. Yes. 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 And sometimes, other times, the paintings have no titles, or there is just a hint in the brackets. Mm -hmm. To, to give it a give the direction. Yeah, the direction of the of the of the interpretation. Yeah. Well, we talked about the photo, photo photographs and yeah. the, the photo, video stills, and um, I was very interesting in, interested in, in the function of, of the memory. Yeah. Uh, you can paint from memory. You can paint uh, after the photographs. Is there a difference for you? Is there a tension between them? Also, also, in this case, there is no, there are no views because sometimes I paint images that I have in my mind, but most of the time I use photograph also. Mm -hmm. uh, but does it, uh, does it uh, function as an engine, uh, 
it yes, just yes. It depends Correct. on the process. Yes, yes, because you look at the photograph just when the process starts. starts. Yes. For instance, this is this is another another image. It's a film still. It's a still from a movie. Yes, the dance play. And you use it for, for, for that? Yes, but I use this mm -hmm. just to start the process of the painting and as a, uh, from a certain moment uh, you look at just the painting, painting. just the painting. Yes. Autonomous process. yes, yes, because it became autonomous and you have to just follow this, this inner logic of the painting and you don't look anymore at the, the photograph. You, you, you just follow the, the feeling that you have with the painting. Do you have other things to say? I'm, I did what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> yeah, Perhaps uh, the audience has something to yeah. ask. Is there a question? Yeah, okay. Um, this is your first solo exhibition. Yeah. How, how, how is it for you to, for the first time, open yourself to the audience? How is that for me? Um, I would never dare to hang any of my works anywhere because I'm not talented, one. But also, um, I, does, does it make you feel vulnerable, proud? What kind of emotion does it bring to you to see the final results? Yeah, to, to answer this question, we need a lot of time because the feeling are, feelings are, are mixed. Yeah, are mixed. But in general, I can say that it has been hard to work for many years in my studio and to make this research alone because because I work without you know without uh, I work in my studio with my yes, paintings. Yes, in your own. Yes. Now you're yeah. here. Yeah. And but <laughs> this is this is just. Uh, the first consideration. And in the second hand, it's an important moment for me because I can see the result of these years of research you know, on the world under my eyes, but more important under your eyes, under the eyes of the observer, because it's important, it's a dialogue, not just between me and the canvas, but it's a dialogue among me, the, the paintings and the observers. So it's important to come out of the studio and to hey, Are leave. you interested in, to hear what people think of your paintings? Are you interested in other Yes, I'm, I'm always interested in, in your opinion mm -hmm. of that because, because it helps the research, it helps the, the direction of your, because if it works, you, for some reason, you have, I think, motivated to, to do, continue. to continue, but to, to obvious, also. to continue, but to do always well, you know. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope. Someone else? Um, yes, I have a question about this specific painting. It's not here in this show, it's in the book. Yeah. And it's called WASP, which means the house? Uh, no, it's, well, it's, it's, it's the long black girl. Or yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, no. Well, well, there's not one the girl the same title. So I was curious. What is oh, the title? Yes. The yes. Yes. <laughs> so when I think it's white Anglo Saxon Protestant, I can make up a story. But the abbreviation is how we are sexual perverts, which is a hard rock band from the 90s. So. <laughs> How does the title refer to the painting? Yeah, which is your idea? I think the first one yes. is what is uh, best known. Uh, yeah, I think the sex process. And it has something maybe some American. Well, I love this. No, this is my idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Do you use other uh, techniques? Uh, you, you're a painter, but I could uh, imagine that you also 
maybe in the future, are going to use uh, modern technologies in your work, like a lot of artists do nowadays? Yeah, this is this is a good question, uh, but um, I don't know because because I in this moment I I'm exploring this this medium, the painting, and uh, I sometimes use collages to study the composition, but I don't know. But for me, the final result in this moment is a painting. Because, yeah, I. You don't draw? I prefer the light of the color. For me, the, co the, the drawing is, ja is too analytic. Okay. Because you have to. I, for example, in my paintings, you can see which the drawing mean, means for me. Because and the drawing. Yeah, because the drawing, yes. Because it's just a line. It's just a general organization of the composition, but no, no shadows and no other thing. Mm -hmm. I start after these few lines yeah. of drawing. I start with the, with the color and I, I play with the color. I explore the color. Okay. And and it's um, you have uh, you prepare the canvas most in the time. Back, yeah. I think of the, yeah. the big one. It depends, yes. It's there's... not prepared, is that correct? Yes, some are prepared and some other are and not prepared. Why is that? Um, uh, or is it Toufon? Random? Yes. Sometimes it's, for, uh, it's random and other times is if I want to paint with, um, uh, with more color with more um, in impasto, you know, mm -hmm. when you paint with a not too diluted color. I make this preparation because I need the canvas how to resist to all this hand of color. In other times here for example you have just the canvas because it's the color it's very very light. Yeah. You can feel the canvas if you touch here. Yeah, you can feel the, yeah. <laughs> I'm on there. I, I, yeah, I always, when I go to visit the museum, I touch and the alarm, yes, my wife hates me for this, yeah. The alarm, yeah. Will you please leave the museum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And other times, you, mm, yeah, in other uh, canvas you can see, because it's possible that there are uh, many previous versions on the, of a painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at that big tick, that part of the big tick, you can see, and you look, if you look at the depth of the canvas, you can see a very different color compared with the, the color that you have on, on, the, on the surface of the canvas. The depth is brown, but the surface is, yeah. is purple. And for me, that is the history of this process because I start with a, a different color, it doesn't work, and I change this color. And that's why I put the frame a little bit distant from the edge of the, of the canvas because, you, because I want that the depth is visible because I want the observer can, can feel the history of this process, the history of this different colors, different versions. What was the question? I was, uh, uh, speaking of uh, uh, preparations. Yeah. yeah, in that case the preparation is the, the first is brown, but it's not just the preparation, but is the first version of the canvas. It's finished. I didn't like, and it has been just a preparation for another hand and a okay. different color. Mm. But it's like it's good to work. It's a good experience to work on a on a canvas which has yet an image because the color is, mm -hmm. is more deepening. More yeah, deepening. more deepening. Yes. Is there anyone who wants to say something? Um, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you ask us again. But I would like to thank the the, 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 the so. interrogator, the, the, the Frankenstein, with the lady speaker with the oh, flowers. Flowers. because I hope this is the first time and we can invite her oh, other time <laughs> to have this kind of talks. And I hope that all the people who didn't came today, they, they will be sorry for it. Mm -hmm. And that they will come next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>